They stood side by side on the battlefield, both Indigenous and non-Indigenous men fighting to protect their country. But when most soldiers returned home to a hero's welcome, many Indigenous men were shunned and ignored by white society. Pastor Ray Minicon's grandfather served in the 11th Light Horse Regiment in the First World War and his brothers in the Vietnam War. Fathers and grandfathers came back from the war and they came back under the act again and uh, they were then put on reserves and missions. Many of them missed out on the entitlements that, uh, that came with uh, being a war hero. Uh, many of them marched in the back of the lines. Uh, we, we've got stories all over the country. Many of them weren't allowed access to uh, RSLs or, or uh, hotels, uh, even though you know, they fought alongside their brothers. And many of the, their brothers uh, you know, recognised the injustices that were there at that particular time, that particular era. For Pastor Minicon, revealing the untold stories of these soldiers has been a long time coming. The Coloured Digger project has pushed for New South Wales to build a memorial to honour Indigenous soldiers. And the City of Sydney agrees. By committing half a million dollars, the City of Sydney has announced that a memorial will be built by 2015, marking the centenary of the beginning of World War I. We just want to make sure that that story is never lost because these, these are our heroes and uh, we want to make sure that they're, they're, <laughs> they're recognised and honoured. In Canberra, Gary Oakley is leading the campaign for a national memorial. Indigenous Australians, even though they might not have been classed as citizens of their own country, were quite willing to die for their country. Um, I've got probably over a, a thousand names for blokes who served in the First World War. Over a hundred of them get killed. You know, and they're not citizens of their country. They're actually not even supposed to be in the army. It's this patriotism the memorial will highlight. Respect and recognition for those that weren't counted as citizens during World War I and II, but were prepared to stand up and fight for their country. Indigenous history, especially military history, tends to be kind of like a secret history. Not a lot of people know about it. Um, and when we served, especially in the First World War and after the Second World War, we tended to go, well, we went back to community and we disappeared. We didn't march in Anzac days, so it skewed the idea of how many of us served. And being quiet achievers, we went home, didn't draw attention to ourselves, and in doing that, nobody knew about us. For Pastor Minicon, the New South Wales push for a memorial is the first step in remembering the past. The other side of this story too, that we need to uh, also start the conversation about, is that we've got many frontier warriors, like Pemelway here for example, and others who we've, we need to make sure that they're, uh, they're embalmed in our history and our story, our national story here somehow in terms of a monument or sculpture or some way in which this, their contribution to our national story is also recognised. With New South Wales and South Australia building their memorials, the push is now on for the nation's capital to do the same.